I'm going to introduce Ruth. Um, Ruth Pierce is going to um, speak about uh, be hopeful, be strong, be brave, and be curious. So, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmen. And uh, can I share my, yes, I can share my screen. So, all right. This is going to be slightly different probably than I intended, but we will just go with it. So um, it's going to be slightly different because I didn't have the last half hour to prepare. So the topic today is be hopeful, be strong, be brave, be curious. What on earth am I talking about? Well, before we jump into what I'm talking about, I want to just ask you to take a moment and think about how you're feeling right now. And you, if you want to share it in the chat or anything like that, that's fine. But there's no um, obligation to do so. This is something for you to do, to just check in, see how you're feeling, and think about a couple of things. Quite often we are feeling more than one thing at the same time. And sometimes we're even feeling conflicting emotions about the same thing, and that can be a real surprise. Ecstasy, wow, admiration, amazement, joy, admiration. This is so fantastic. So often, because people are making transitions, so you're transitioning from whomever you were listening to last to this session, but very often when people come into my sessions, they've just come from a meeting or they've come from something that was more stressful, and they have a, a mixture of emotions, you know, some of them are less comfortable for them. So it's wonderful to walk into a group that's already positive and buzzing. So thank you all for that. So we're going to be talking about four steps to build motivation and well-being. And the way I came across these four steps was that I am a person who has spent, um, well, all of my life without wanting to admit how long that is. I've spent all of my life trying, struggling to manage anxiety. And I've tried all sorts of things. I've been to therapy. I've done various treatments and things like that. And in 2015, I came across something called the VIA Institute on Character and their character strengths. And after discovering that, I've made all sorts of subsequent discoveries that have led me to become a coach. And what I found is that these four reminders for myself are really, really helpful. Be hopeful, be strong, be brave, and be curious. So let's have a look at each of those in turn, because there are a lot of misconceptions about these ideas of hope, for example. So when I, when you think about the word hope, what do you think of? What, what comes to mind? What does the word hope mean to you? Opportunity, okay. An expectation of a better tomorrow. An expectation of a better tomorrow. Thank you. I will send you the $10 later. The future. <laughs> yeah. So what's interesting about hope is it's very often associated with those kind of almost like fingers crossed, hopefully tomorrow will be better than today. You know, the future is going to be better than the present. And one of the things that the researchers have discovered and some prime researchers are Rick Snyder and Dr. Shane Lopez, who is up on the screen here, is that actually true hope is a combination of a vision of the future and choices and decisions and steps that we put in place to make it happen. So it's actually a combination of that idea of what the future is going to look like and then the word they use for this is agency. It's about us acting as an agent for that change and bringing forth things that will get us closer to that goal. So I invite you in this moment to think about something that you hope for, for the future. And in that, think about the two aspects. What is it that you picture for yourself in the future? And what's one step that you can take right away, you know, in the next week to get yourself just a little closer to that future being true. 
And I'll give you a moment just to think about that, to make a note of that. So we've got that, we've already got hope and we've explored that. And by the way, Dr. Shane Lopez's dog, uh, book, <laughs> dog, book, um, Making Hope Happen is a really great book about examples of people who've done just that, that they've set themselves goals for the future. Some of them very ambitious goals, and then they have planned out steps to get themselves closer and closer to that outcome. Ooh, completing two books in progress, right, two hours per day. Wonderful. So we'll check in with you later, um, Dr. Dave Cornelius, and, and find out whether you lived up to that commitment. So then the next thing is being strong. Now, strengths come in many sizes. We've got personal talents. We've got physical strengths. We've got skills. So talents are the things where we have a natural ability to do something. Skill is taking that talent and kind of honing it and making it even better, getting educated, learning more about it. We've got things that we're passionate about that we may not actually particularly act on. But the thing that I mentioned earlier that I stumbled into was character strengths. And character strengths are actually researched. They're evidence-based. We know that they actually um, apply to everybody in the world, regardless of religion and culture and background and age, gender, all of these things, they, it, these 24 strengths surpass that, those concepts. And you can see here on the screen, hopefully, the 24 strengths that we're talking about. Um, this is the handout, and actually, uh, Dave, I will send this to you afterwards if, um, if that's helpful, and the slides so that people can have the notes afterwards. I'll send you a PDF. Um, but these are the 24 strengths. Here's a summary of them. And what I invite you to do, so remember, we're being strong. I want you to take a look at this list and choose one or two of these strengths that you think really apply to you. So think about what it feels like. Just You can pick one or two. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. But think about what it feels like when you really use those strengths. How do you use those strengths? Where do you, where do you feel them? When do you use them? What are you doing when you use those character strengths? Now, my top strengths are appreciation of beauty and excellence and bravery. And we're going to come to bravery in a moment. Appreciation of beauty and excellence was a surprise to me. And sometimes we are surprised. I will also send to you, Dave, a link that allows everybody to take their free assessment so that you'll be able to get your ranking of 24 character strengths. Sphere Institute makes that available to, for free. Um, oh, my work for 2022 is kindness. I love that. So, um, yeah, so my top one is appreciation of beauty and excellence. And that was a surprise to me that it was a strength. But what I discovered is through, through that appreciation, I can really engage mindfulness and mindfulness helps me to take a break from being anxious. So I can go outside and observe nature or I can watch a program about nature or something like that, or I can watch an amazing performance, a virtuoso performance, and it gets me excited and energized and more positive. And I really immerse myself in that story. So Certainly not self-regulation, I'm, I'm zest and love of learning. So Jenny, um, it is extremely common for self-regulation to be ranked at the bottom for people, somewhere between 20 and 24. Um, across the world, we find that it doesn't even matter what country we're talking about, is that self-regulation tends to be low. Zest is also one that gets reported as low. So if you are high in zest, that is fabulous. And it's one of the five strengths that is known to be very well correlated and connected with um, a sense of well-being. So hope, zest, curiosity, love, um, and gratitude are the five strengths that when you exercise those strengths, you tend to feel higher levels of well-being. So I want you to, you've been thinking about how you use that strength. Now imagine for a moment 
that you don't have that strength, that for 30 days, you can't engage that strength that you picked for yourself. So Dave, you're taking 30 days off from being kind to anyone. You're not going to do any favors. You're not going to pay any attention to people. You're not going to, you know, just sort of look after their needs or anything like that. Um, for me, there's no going outside and, you know, just absorbing what's going on in nature and appreciating the birds I'm also high in curiosity. Michael, you can't ask a question. You can't look anything up on the internet. You can't check anything in a book. You're going to have to just turn all of that off. Now think about that for a moment. How does that feel? To imagine it. being without that for a month. So as, as yes. I think about it, Ruth, Ruth, real quick, it's almost like I don't recognize that person that doesn't have those. I'm like, it doesn't <laughs> feel like me. Doesn't feel like you. Jody said, terrible, lonely, isolating. Matthew, thank you so much for sharing Empowered, because you are the second person who's mentioned kindness as being a top strength, who has said, you know what, 30 days off from being kind would be wonderful. And there's a whole thing that we can go into to do with overuse of strengths. And yeah, I don't know what I would do. Sounds miserable. All, all of these things. So, um, but there are times when we get so hung up in our strengths or we're using them so much. Uh, okay, Juliana, thank you. Um, that, that actually it starts to be a disservice to us and to others because we're overusing the strength. And as I say, that's a whole different discussion. But thank you for sharing that observation. So what about bravery? What do you think of when we say brave? Oh, and by the way, you can have your strengths back now. Um, except for Matthew, you don't have to take kindness back right now. But uh, but yeah, you can all have your strengths. It wasn't true. Feeling fear, but doing it anyhow. Thank you, Jody. Yes, that's wonderful. So that was a total surprise to me. Bravery came out as one of my top strengths. And I've said I've struggled all my life with anxiety. And I was like, how can that possibly be true that bravery is my second strength? if I'm someone who's anxious about everything. And as I did research into this, and there's a great book by Robert Biswas-Dina called Courage. Um, as I did more research into it, I came to realize that bravery is, as you say, Matthew, not the absence of fear. It's feeling fear, feeling anxiety, feeling uncomfortable and doing it anyway. So now I invite you to think of a time where you have felt fear, felt uncomfortable and done it anyway. We'll just take a moment and you think about that. And then what did that feel like when you, you were anticipating, you know, really feeling uncomfortable, not wanting to do it, and then you did it anyway? What did that feel like? I know for me, when I overcome my anxiety and I do something anyway, it feels pretty darn good. It can be exhausting as well. And sometimes I need a day. Relief. Yeah. Sometimes there's relief. Oh, we've got two reliefs. Thank you. Empowering and exhausting. Yeah. It's a yes and, right? It can be hard to push through and do something anyway, but it is empowering. It is exhilarating. And there is a relief that I did it. You know, it's over. Part of it is relief that it's over, but sometimes it's also relief that we didn't run away you know, that we didn't say, you know what, I'm just going to avoid it. So um, that's where the bravery comes in. And then finally, curiosity, I'm a coach. So as a coach, we're not supposed to advise anyone on anything. We don't give you a solution. We don't tell you what to do. We help you figure out what it is that you need and what you already have at your fingertips. And curiosity is our friend because what we do is ask lots of questions, what and how questions. And when we do that, we help people and calls type one thinking into type two thinking. We do a lot of things on autopilot. We have to because we can't possibly process all the information that we need to in a minute by minute, second by second. 
And so what our brains do is they set up um, these rules that we, you know, rules of thumb, we call them in English, of the way we think things through and the way we think do things is like we have a certain amount of autopilot. And so what we're doing when we're asking questions is we're pausing that autopilot and saying, what is it really? What is it specifically? What am I doing? So I encourage you to use curiosity as much as possible. Um, so I invite you to think over today, you've been attending all these wonderful sessions or think over this last week and think about something that, that got you wondering and you didn't do anything about it. There's a question you'd still like to have answered. Okay, thank you, Carmen. Think about that question you'd like to have answered and then think about what you're gonna do about it. How are you gonna find out more about that? So remember our thing at the beginning was be hopeful, be strong, be brave, be curious. So you identified something you're looking forward to in the future and some action you can take to move forward towards it. So you exercised hope. You thought about how it feels to give up something you'd identified as being a really important strength. And not everyone felt the same way, but you you really thought about what it is to have that strength and what it's like potentially to be without it. And there are lots of things we can do around that to do with teams and agile and everything around what happens when people don't get to use their strengths. We explored a bit about what it feels like to be brave and words came up like exhilarating and liberating. And then we've thought about how we might take action to answer a question that we have. So how do you feel now? And as we don't have, amazing, thank you. <laughs> um, as we don't have too much time, I'll just ask you to raise your hand if you notice any change in your emotions you guys all came in positive and excited and and enthusiastic so maybe you didn't quite often when I'm working with groups they notice a change and one of the reasons that we do this exercise so very often is that emotions come and go relaxed thank you Michael optimistic um, uh, emotions come and go and we don't have to do anything about them we don't actually have to take any action. Noticing them, just acknowledging that they're there and then going about your business, spending 10 minutes doing something else is enough for your emotions to flow by and something else to come along. And with that, I wanna thank you all for being here today. It was a real pleasure. Um, Dr. Cornelius, thank you very much for inviting me. Carmen, thank you for uh, introducing me. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you, Ruth. That was amazing, Ruth. Yeah. Thank you, Ruth. Yeah. Thank you. That's fantastic. <laughs> Great exercise. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe um, since Ruth is our uh, final speaker when it comes to uh, lightning talks for now, maybe we could spare a few minutes for questions and then I will do an announcement of what's to come. So, Allison, don't be afraid to ask questions. <laughs> Ooh, you're a curious person, then, Allison. <laughs> uh, actually, your your list of strengths was interesting because uh, it had on there perspective, and I resonated like that resonated for me of like, oh, I do tend to look at things very differently from other people. I didn't know that perspective could be the name of that. <laughs> ah, interesting. Uh, and I, I guess I wonder, because you, you had mentioned, obviously, these strengths getting overused, uh, that I could see, like, there are times when I bring up perspective that it could uh, not land well for, you know, the people I'm collaborating with. Uh, I was mm -hmm. having a hard time imagining, like, what is it when, like, what's the experience for me if I am trying to overuse that strength, um, other than... It might be that sort of like analysis paralysis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of like churning. It's, yeah, sort of churning out. That's, that's what I've seen in people when I'm coaching them is yeah. that there's always one more point of view. There's another point of view. There's another point of view. And at some point it's like, you know, you need to sift through them and say, okay, this is, 
this is what we're landing on, this is what we're going to commit to, right? There's a few yeah. of the strengths. That can get yeah, because it, it feels like, you know, to to have someone like as a coach be able to recognize like, whoa, you're taking your strength like way too far right now. Like, let's set that aside. It could be like really impactful um, for me. It's and hopefully just, as, as a coach, what it's like, how would you know? <laughs> yeah. So, hope uh, you know, as a coach, what we would generally say is what else do you want to use? Because we don't come mm-hmm. along one strength at a time. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. we build these constellations of strengths and it's like, okay, so you're using perspective. Perspective is great. What do you want to balance it out with? You know, what yeah. might help you? Maybe curiosity. You could ask someone else, well, what do they think? You mm-hmm. know, and that, that might help balance it out or... Or, you know, some one of your other strengths, humility, you might say, you know what, I've got some other ideas about how we might look at this, but but we've done enough, you know. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna take a step back. Cool, so. cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Who else has a question, comment? Oh, we want this they, someone's asked for the contact slide to be put back. Oops. Yeah, and if you have any if you have any questions afterwards, just like that curiosity thing about what piqued your interest sometime today or this week and you haven't acted on it, feel free to get in touch with me. I love questions about this stuff. So um, I am more than happy to answer questions. And in particular around what on earth has this got to do with Agile for Humanity? Because in 10 minutes, it's kind of hard to set context. But... So the reason why we use Hoover as, as a, a platform is because it allows us to continue to have conversation over time and stay connected. You know, so feel free to use that platform to send mm-hmm. messages, ask questions. Um, it's really powerful in that way. Wonderful. Mm. Oh, Jody, what an interesting question that you put in the chat. Can't wait to hear what you decide when you've sat with it. Yeah, it's it's a <laughs> the downside to having a calling and a passion and something that uh, that kind of defines who you are as a person is when that's no longer an option. Mm-hmm. What what's left? And so, ha, huh, your talk hit hard <laughs> in good ways. In good ways, it's good. it's a. Well, message me. We've been messaging on the on the app anyway. So message again. Being down that road, I can certainly relate. Yeah, it's a it's a um, especially common for small business people is that you know they are the business and the business is them, and you lose track of why are you you know some of why you're doing the business is because you have a passion or a calling, and some of it is because you want to create a full life for yourself, right? And what is a full life? I've been having that conversation with my partners at work because I realized the other day that I've been so hyper-focused on making the coaching programs work that I'd forgotten what it is that I want to be doing when I'm not coaching. (laughs) So it's, um, yeah, it's a challenge. 